Okay, perfect. Okay, I hope uh, everyone can see my screen. Okay, so this session is going to be more of theoretical session about data engineering with Twitter data. Uh, I hope everyone has got access to the challenge document as well as to the entire Google Drive, right? Can someone confirm that? Yes. Okay. So data engineering with Twitter data. So before I start on, I would like to hear what you guys think that data engineering is and what specific tasks as a data engineer we would be working on. Uh, I know some of you might already be familiar with, with it and some might be completely new for some of you, but it's perfectly fine since we are going to be working on several data engineering projects both now and in the coming weeks, but would like to hear what you even think it might be if you are even unfamiliar with the detailed drawing. Anyone? Okay, I've been there, go on. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I think data engineering is, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear. Okay, uh, data engineering is a field uh, where we collect large amounts of data, organize it, and uh, help drive uh, businesses or any other institutions make better decisions. Nice, perfect. Johannes? Okay, thank you. Well, data engineering is part of the, the big data science process. And then it's mainly specialized in providing the, uh, the technical or technological infrastructure that's uh, needed for the uh, providing a status which the data scientists is used. Thank you. Yes, nice, thank you. Anyone? Okay, Brown. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, as, a, as I am, my understanding, data engineering is uh, the area or the subject that focus on the data that make the data useful and accessible for accessible accessible for a customer or for a company. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Mohammed, let's hear from Mohammed and we can continue. Okay. As I think uh, every day data become more larger and larger. So uh, in nowadays uh, we tend to use computers and uh, big processing uh, to uh, try to extract the future. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, futures that can help the companies to take a better decision uh, for their business. So uh, we can engage some techniques uh, using, for example, machine learning techniques, uh, traditional or uh, some new techniques. So it is all about try to uh, process all this huge data uh, and try to use machine learning to extract uh, uh, like useful features that make companies try to uh, make better decisions. That's all about. Yes, thank you. Well said. Pakalo? Okay, thank you. Uh, Mm, your, your voice is a bit is breaking, Pagal. Uh, we can't hear you. Okay, maybe later. Let's see from us and we'll continue the session. Jonas, go. Jonas? Uh, we can't hear you first speaking. Okay, then. 
where we'll continue with the slides. So as you guys have said, data engineering is the process of moving data from one source to another. For example, it might be from Twitter, a NoSQL database to an S3 bucket, or from different physical sensors, devices to inform data, data store. So in our case, we are going to extract data from Twitter, which is a NoSQL, database, a NoSQL data format, which holds same structured data format, which is JSON, and load it into a format which is suitable for our needs, because we are going to work on sentiment analysis, which is related to machine learning, and also some kind of analysis on our data. So we are going to extract data from the source, which is Twitter, to a format that's required for the data analysis, as well as to the machine learning model. So data engineer, as a data engineer, what we'll be working on is to load the data or to ingest the data from the source and load it to the format that's required for the further analysis or machine learning. So data engineering makes raw data usable. When there is a raw data that isn't usable, it might be in a data lake or any other data source. From It might be from a social media or any other platforms. It will ingest those data and put it in a format that is usable uh, for anyone that's going to use that data. It might be the data scientists, the machine learning engineers, or data analysts. Uh, as it has been said earlier by Mohammed and others, data is becoming larger and larger. Uh, earlier in previous days, data scientists were the one also working on the data engineering pipeline, setting up the automated pipeline, and the rest of the collection, storing, and formatting of the data. But now, since data is becoming larger and larger, data engineering has become a specific field uh, that data engineers will be working on ingesting data, processing data, and storing it in a format that's suitable for uh, others. So it mainly involves collecting data, storing, and analyzing data at a scale. The main thing or the main benefit of data engineer is it processes data that can be scaled easily uh, for data scientists or data analysts. So a data engineer is just the one that delivers correct data to the right people in the right form as effectively as possible. So the data engineer is the one that sets up the pipeline, which provides the data in a suitable format for one that's going to use it. And different formats or different destinations are required for different projects, different teams, and a data science project might require different or specific format and the data analyst also might require any format that's different from the data scientist. So the data engineer is the one that's responsible to set up that automated pipeline, which will efficiently deliver that data to the data analyst or to the data scientist. And building a data pipeline, a data pipeline is just a set of actions that ingest raw data from disparate sources and moves that data for storage and analysis. And in our case, we are going to see that on the next slides, we are going to ingest data, the data from uh, Twitter using Twitter's API and load that data into a format that's suitable for the analysis that we are going to work on. And uh, the data has already been downloaded or has already been ingested for you because uh, Twitter's develop Twitter is a developer's account and using developer's account, we can ingest data from Twitter's and from Twitter and ingest any type of data that Twitter allows us. So the first step is to get an API key from developer's account. For now, we have set up that part using our own developer's account, but we highly encourage you guys, everyone, we highly encourage everyone to set up their own developer's account, both now and in the future, so that uh, you guys can be able to ingest data from Twitter and uh, be able to extract any type of data any type of data that Twitter, uh, Twitter allows. And we use TPy library to ingest data. TPy is just a library which is built on top of Twitter's API, which will enable us to ingest data from Twitter. And finally, pre-processing the data and storing the data into MySQL database. And the final step is to visualize, communicate, and deploy that data. We'll go into the steps uh, in the next slide. But for the developer's account, I think you can go to the developer's, Twitter's developer's account. And in the developers portal, you can go on and request your own uh, Twitter developer API key. You just have to fill some basic information, what your use case is, and what you are going to do using the Twitter API. 
you'll have to provide that information and normally it takes about three to five business days for your request to be accepted or rejected. Uh, but if you put something good or something that aligns with their goal, they will probably accept you and you will have the uh, developer's account key. Let me just drop this on the chat. And yes, uh, we highly encourage you guys to uh, prompt to request this developer's account so that you can <clears throat> uh, use this to ingest data from Twitter. But for now, we have done that and that won't be necessary. But I will go over the steps that we have gone to ingest data. So uh, the keys are stored in a configuration file. This keys has been revoked and uh, I'm not able to use this keys and no one can use this because I've revoked this key because this key should be private to each individual. And you should always put these keys or these configuration files from Twitter's developer account to your Git ignore when you push it to your GitHub repository because it's something sensitive and something personal to each individual. So what you can get from Twitter's developer is consumer key, a consumer secret access token and access token secret. And these are the required, the required configuration files to make any kind of request using the Twitter's account. In our case, we'll be using TwiPy, but when you are going to make any kind of request using the Twitter's API or TwiPy library, you'll be using this configuration uh, keys uh, in your data. So the first thing is to get data. So uh, if, you're, if you have seen the document, if you have gone through the document, there has been two type of data. The first one was collected globally without inputting any type of geocode. And the second one is space. Uh, the second one was collected using specific geocodes for African countries. So for example, uh, Ethiopia has a specific geocode, Kenya has a specific geocode, and each country in Africa has, each country in the world has specific geocodes. So we use those geocodes in addition to the keywords that we used in the data that was collected. But for now, uh, uh, I'm just going to show you uh, on keywords from blockchain, cryptocurrency, financial market, Bitcoin, or Ethereum. So we are going to analyze or we are going to ingest data from Twitter using the TwiPy library based on the based on this given cures and we can collect that data and make further analysis if required so the first thing is to import the keys that are required for ingesting the data and finally using the tupi library tupi is nothing but uh, a library that's built on top of twitter's api i think there are other libraries as well but tupi is the base that i know so far but i'm sure that there are other libraries to uh, ingest data from Twitter using the Twitter API. So once you have, once you get the consumer key, the consumer secret access key and access token secret using the developer's API from Twitter, you can set up the TwiPy library and start ingesting uh, using TwiPy's uh, API. Uh, so the first thing is there are two sets of uh, API that's accessible or that's provided. The first one is using TwiPy cursor and the second one is using stream. What cursor? does is it ingests data based on a specified timeline. I think Twitter allows to ingest data from the past week. They have restricted uh, only to be, uh, they have only given a timeline of one week. I'm not exactly sure about that, but uh, previously that the, it was allowed to ingest data uh, of longer duration. So if you are going to use cursor, you are able to ingest data going back to a timeline and uh, based on specified filters or cures and ingest that data from Twitter. But if you are going to use a stream from Twitter, the stream is going to stream data from Twitter using the specified cures in a real time. So every time a new tweet comes or a new, uh, a new tweet is being tweeted using the cures that is specified or the hashtag that is specified, that is going to be consumed by your uh, TwiPy's uh, streaming API. Uh, I will try to show you both, but using cursor, you'll first provide the API that you set up using the secret keys. And finally, using Q, which stands for the keywords that you are going to look for. In our case, we are just going to filter based on blockchain, cryptocurrency, financial market, Bitcoin, or Ethereum. So after we put that, uh, we will put the extended mode and including this to true. And we can limit, for, in this case, I just limited it to 50 tweets, but you can increase that uh, to longer to 
much higher tweets. Uh, but Twitter has a rate limit about, I'm not exactly sure, but they have a late limit and they will limit you. The, you can only ingest data from the Twitter's API. There is a limit of, uh, if I'm not wrong, about 5,000 tweets per 15 minutes. And there is a workaround over that. The first thing is uh, to pull the data, to pull the data that's coming. And I opened uh, a webstreet.json file in my data directory. And for each data that's coming, for each data that's being ingested, I'm going to write that data to this specific file and separate it with a new line. And when there is an exception that's being shown by the three pile library, which this ex exception is too many requests. So as I've said earlier, there is a limit, a rate limit that's being shown every fit within 15 minutes. So if you reach that rate limit, uh, there is an error that's being shown by Twitter's, by two pies library, which is too many requests. You can handle that by sleeping for about uh, 15 minutes so that after 15 minutes, you can start uh, ingesting that data. I think there is also another way to uh, to go around that. We can also use the wait wait on rate limit to true. Yeah. So if you specify when setting it up, if you specify on wait on rate limit to true, it will automatically it will wait for that limit to pass so that after every fifteen minutes you'll be able to ingest will be able to start ingesting that data. Uh, so this particular script will do, what this particular script will do is it will look for these specific keywords from the past week and it will ingest those tweets into the web3.json file. Uh, I've already done that. So this is a, the type of format that it's going to look like. So there are going to be multiple tweets. In my case, I only limited that tweet to 50 so that I will only have 50 tweets, but you can you are able to ingest more higher number of tweets. Uh, I think for the project there are about twenty thousand tweets for the global data, and for the African with specific geocodes there might be a much higher number of tweets. And for the geocode that I told you earlier, if you want to uh, filter based on a geocode as well, in addition to the keywords, you can specify the geocodes here, and this will only ingest tweets from this country's geocode. For example, let's say that this geocode is for Ghana and it will only look for tweets that are being tweeted from Ghana. And if the person that's tweeting that tweet doesn't have the location turned on, it will automatically try to find the person's original, the person original information that he provided when signing up for Twitter, and it will only filter based on the geocode as well as the keywords. And finally, it will be stored on the uh, on the file that we specified. Uh, so for the streaming, this is the same configuration as the cursor. What streaming does is just it will stream in real time, but cursor will be able to load data or to ingest data from previous timelines as well. But stream will only be able to uh, ingest data in a real time, so that anyone tweeting now will will be able to load that or to ingest that uh, from Twitter. So this is the same state setup, but the difference is that you initialize your class with the stream uh, <coughs> class that's provided from TweetPy, and if you initialize that with stream, then there are parameters or functions that can be used methods that can be used on this class. So every time when the data arrives or a data with that specific keyword arrives, this on data will be triggered and we can also go through the same step again. So we can write the data file and uh, when there is no data, it will just hang and keep listening until a new data comes with that specific keywords. So this is just an event-based uh, trigger when data with our filter comes, it will be triggered and it will be able to write, but the cursor mode will be able to ingest all data from the previous timelines. Uh, and what I highly recommend you guys to do is to take the single tweet out of the JSON file that's been created for you, that has been given to you on the Google Drive, uh, and try to analyze what the data looks like. So for this case, for the blockchain related keywords, what I did was I took the first tweet and 
uh, I displayed it in a JSON format. I used, I think, JSON formatter. And using JSON formatter, you can see what each field of the data contains, what the JSON contains, and what each field, uh, what type of data each field contains. So for example, there is a credit card property, there is an ID property, there is a, a full text property, which, which is just the tweet that's been tweeted, if it's truncated, and other multiple properties. This data is consistent for any kind of uh, Twitter ingestion that you are going to work on. If you are going to just using different keywords, the data format is similar, but the values of the fields might be different. So the best thing to do before starting working on the project for this week is to analyze or to uh, gain some insights about the data that you have. I think in any type of project, especially related to data related projects, the first thing is understanding the data that you have. So if you don't understand the data that you have, or if you don't have much understanding about the data that you are going to work on, that will cost you time. So first, come try to take only a single tweet, a single or two, a single tweet from the JSON file and try to look at the fields that you are being given. So there's the credit card property and other multiple fields with specific values. And you can see the values that they have, the data types that they have. And once you start working on, it will be much easier because you already know what you are going to work on. Uh, that being said, I think we can continue. So the first step was to get an API key from developer's account. We already did that. And using the developer's account, we set up uh, we set up uh, the TwiPy library and loaded the data. We used specific keywords for our case. It was, uh, the, the topic was US to China and to Taiwan related topics. So we ingested the data based on that given tweets, the, based on that given keywords. And after loading the data, the next step is to process the data, to store the data and to visualize, to communicate and to deploy the data. I think this will be the task that you'll be working on in the coming days. So the pipeline that we are going to work on or that has been said looks like this. First, there is Twitter as a data source and the data has been ingested in a JSON format. So the data is in a JSON format currently and your task will be first to store that in a CSV format. You might do some kind of cleaning, some kind of pre-processing and make it in a way that's efficient for the next uh, tasks that you are going to work on. Maybe for the sentiment analysis, it's an it's it's an, an, an NLP project so that you might have to process the data, you might have to remove some special keywords and even uh, other some kind of pre-processing. And after that has been pre-processed, you can store it into a you can format it into a CSV file, and finally you can load it to a database, it can be MySQL, Postgres, or any kind of database that uh, you have in mind. And finally, after it's been stored, the final step is to visualize the data. Uh, in our case, you can use Streamlit, you can use Flask, or any other kind of visualization library that you have in mind, so that we can be able to communicate the data that you have at hand. Because you have been already given a data using a specific keyword, which is related to China, US, and Taiwan, and we want to know what people are saying about China, US, and Taiwan. We have two different type of data sets, one from Africa and one from global. And the final goal after making the analysis, after working on the sentiment analysis in different uh, steps is to gain insight what people are talking about or what people are tweeting about on Twitter. Uh, and this is a data collection from Twitter. I've already gone uh, through this. And yes, uh, as you have said earlier, the first source or the first thing that data engineer will do is to extract a raw data source and convert it into a format that's suitable for analysis or any, or any kind of machine learning uh, modeling project. So this is the data, the raw data that that we ingested and the next step is to pre-process this data and make it in a format that's suitable for the project that you are going to work on. And after extraction, this is what it looks like. I just converted the tweets, the tweets, the, all of the JSON file 
into a CSV file, and this is what it will look like. But as you can see here, the original text, it contains some special characters and some escape characters and different type of uh, characters that's, that isn't uh, necessary or even desirable for the sentiment analysis that we are going to work on on the next days. So after the extraction, a bit of cleaning is done. By cleaning, I mean it's not pre-processing, but just removing duplicates and uh, uh, yes, mostly removing duplicates and some simpler transformations are done in the first step. And after the cleaning, the next step will be removing tags. Uh, this might not be necessary for this case because tags mostly when you try to scrape data from the web, there might be some HTML tags in your data and there might be some uh, type of HTML tag. So you, you might want to remove that and you might also want to remove emojis and special characters in the data. There are multiple emoji characters and special characters, removing accented characters, expanding contractions, data and on the data, some words might be, uh, yeah, some, for example, the word haven't might be said in a single word so that you might have to separate that into have and not because machine learning is just a machine that tries to, uh, fetch the data and make some kind of prediction. In our case, what we are going to do is a sentiment analysis in the coming days. And sentiment analysis for the machine learning model, it only expects uh, a set of words that's been trained on. So if you are going to work on that type of machine learning model, we have to give this in a way that's suitable for the machine learning model to work with. And we can also reduce the drive load to the word stems using different techniques, but there is a separate session for, for that. So we won't be going over that. So after the task has been processed, after the after these steps has been followed, it has been it hasn't been cleaned fully, but you can see that the special characters has been removed and the at symbol and the slash symbols or even the emojis have been removed. And at least it's now in a format that's suitable for further. Uh, analysis or machine learning model. And finally, the final step comes the visualization step. And in the visualization, you can use different techniques. The first one that you are going, that you see here is a word cloud. A word cloud is nothing but uh, a collection or cluster of words depicted in different sites. And the bigger the size of the word is, the more often it's mentioned in the tweet and the more important it is. So on the data that we used in for this week's project, most of the data is related to China and Taiwan. And you can also see that there are some other words on the data, uh, such as Pelosi, uh, response, military. There are terms related to military, to China, to Taiwan. And the bigger the word is, the more important or the more often uh, it was mentioned in the tweets. So a word cloud just summarizes the data that we have and it puts or it displays the the words that are more important or most often mentioned in our data. You can also visualize based on the sentiment and make also any other uh, analysis based on the data that we have been working on. I think this is it. And if there is any question. Uh, okay. Is any use case allowed or some of them? Okay, uh, if I'm not wrong, Igdi, you're referring to the Twitter's developer account. Uh, so for the Twitter's developer account, I think uh, if you sometimes specify things that doesn't go according to Twitter's policy, they will automatically reject that request. And if you specify, if there, there are multiple forms that you are going to fill. And if they don't go together, or if they think that you are just requesting the API to make some kind of uh, work that isn't governed by Twitter, for example, it might be co it might be related to government issue or any other thing, they will automatically decline. But most of the time, if you specify that you are going to use the Twitter's API just for development purpose and as a student, they will probably accept that request. I think there are other hands. Okay, Jonas.
Jonas, thank you for speaking. Okay, Gideon. Uh, can you yes, hear me? Can. Uh, I was just wondering uh, how to extract that single uh, JSON file, like you said, to visualize the entire data. You suggested extracting just a single entry. And I was just wondering how to do that from the raw dump, data dump. OK, yeah. So you can, let me go back to the data folder. And this contains about 50 tweets. You can select the, OK, can you hear me? Yes, uh, I can hear okay. you. Uh, my PC got stuck and, uh, okay, my PC is getting stuck, but what you can do is you can select the first data. Okay, I'm, I don't know why it's not working, but yes. You can select the first data and just create uh, a file. And if you paste it here, and if you use, since I'm using the JSON formatter, if you are using Visual Studio Code, there is a JSON formatter extension. And if you paste and save that, it will automatically format it as a JSON file. Okay, so I need to add the JSON formatter yes. extension to my Visual go, Code. Yes, you can go to the extension tab and add JSON formatter uh, as your extension. Okay, thank you. Margaret? And why we need data from uh, the global and also specific African countries for this project exactly? Uh, I think Yabival has mentioned that in the introduction to the to this week's session, but basically you'll be working on the data from that's been collected globally. But when it comes to Africa, that it has been there has been some kind of drift because it's been collected with some specific geo codes. And we want to know what the world is saying about the topics that is provided. And we also want to know what Africa is saying. Uh, but we, if you have time, it's based to work on both data sets. But if not, it's based to work on the global data and analyze what people globally are talking or what people are tweeting globally about the China, Taiwan, and US related issue. So the first thing is to work on uh, will, data. Okay. Will we be will we be needed to visualize exactly where the tweets have been collected from like the specific countries? Yes, you can also visualize that. I think you are not limited to a specific uh, type of visualization. For this case, I only visualize using Word Cloud and some other visualizations, but feel free to use any different types of visualizations that you think is helpful for the analysis that you are going to make. Uh, is that clear, Margaret, or? Um, yeah, that's clear, thanks. Okay. Joseph? Yeah, hello. Hello. Yeah, I would like to know if you will share the codes of for extracting the data. The, the code for the extraction? Yeah. Sure. I will make sure to uh, zip it and put it on the Google Drive folder. So thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other question? Prince, go on. Hi. Hello. Uh, regarding the JSON formatter in BS Wood, which would you recommend? Uh, there might be multiple formatter, but in my case, I think I used Prettify JSON uh, with about 1.3 million downloads by, uh, yes. Others might also work, but I think I've, I've been using Prettify JSON for a while and it works pretty well. 
Okay, thank you. Hello. Okay, hello. Yeah, I would like to know if I'm using another ID different from Visual Studio Code, for example, if I'm using an uh, how to get, is it possible to get an expansion to, I don't know, to format the data to the JSON probably? Uh, I'm not exactly sure about that. I haven't been using PyCharm, uh, but I'm sure that there are some extensions that's possible to use with PyCharm. But I'm not exactly sure about that. Maybe others from the Academy or even other trains. If any one of you are familiar with extensions to be used with PyCharm, please feel free to unmute and speak. Okay, thank you. Okay, maybe you can also ask this question on Slack and someone might get back to you. All right. Okay. Any other question? Okay, so is the third data streaming automated? So if so, what's the trigger when we stop our program? Yes, the Twitter stream, data streaming is automated and once you start the program, it will start uh, to ingest data based on tweets that are being tweeted after you started the program. And the only way that I see that you can stop it is by canceling or stopping the program from your site. But if you don't do that, it will go on to stream data. It, just think of it as an event-based platform where where the program is being triggered every time an event occurs or an event happens. So every time a tweet has been is being tweeted from using a specific keywords or from a specific person, that event will be triggered and you'll be able to ingest that specific data. Okay, I hope it's clear now. Okay, Johannes. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there any way to access uh, Twitter API data other than Tweet uh, library? Uh, yes, I have heard of some other libraries, but I haven't, to be honest, I haven't used any other library other than Tweetpy. Uh, for me, Tweetpy is the best library that I've been using so far to ingest data from Twitter. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other question? Jonas, is that the question or? Okay, Margaret. Margaret, you're muted if you are speaking. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, my question is about um, the laws of um, getting data from Twitter. So if maybe you need to get data from Twitter and it's about the elections that is, that is happening or anything, and you, of course, you'll have your, you analyze your data and then you visualize um how how well will it um uh how oh, i'm finding it hard to phrase it but how will if if the data you visualize is not exactly what is going on how is that like are you allowed to yes i mean if, uh, okay uh are you allowed to post the results if maybe you took the data for just like a day or two and if your data analysis is false um are you is it okay if you post it on socials and what are the impacts if you don't analyze your data well uh yes i think one of the uh, primary reason that you are you might not analyze the data correctly is the process or the procedures that you follow 
uh, to pre-process the data. So, for example, if you are not uh, removing the punctuations or special characters or other formats that are suitable for the machine learning model or for the sentiment analysis, or even, uh, for example, for in my case, I've used uh, the word cloud. We've used the word cloud for the for the final visualization, and for the word cloud, the data was supposed to be processed uh, well because uh, the library that we use to uh, to visualize or to bring up the word cloud requires the, the format to be suitable because it's an, an NLP project after all. It has to it had to be uh, in a well structured and in a well formatted uh, data because sometimes if your data doesn't if your data consists of special characters or uh, emojis or even other characters that aren't suitable for the machine learning model, you might, you will definitely want to get a visualization that correctly depicts the situation that's being uh, tweeted on Twitter. So one thing that I will do if the data that I'm getting or the visualization that I'm getting isn't correct is I will go back to the pre-processing step and I will try to pre-process the data again and again. And once you work on your pre-processing uh, phase of your pipeline well, you will certainly get a good visualization or a correct visualization of the data that you have. This is the visualizations that I tried or to uh, make up within a day or two, but I'm sure that uh, you guys can work on more better or much better visualization uh, based on the data that you have. Am I correct? Okay, go on, my correct. Okay, uh, maybe get you. Ah, uh, yes, I was just wondering uh, if you'll be providing us the code uh, for uh, cleaning the data and pre processing as well as the extraction. Uh, yes, I'll be providing the, for the extraction, and I think there is already a data on the Google Drive for the pro, for the pre processing, but uh, it's something that uh, you are going to work on throughout the week. I think, I mean, this is the challenge that you are going to be working on to pre process the data, to clean the data, and to make it in a format that's suitable for the analysis that you are going to make. Okay, thank you. Okay, Margaret? I'm sorry, I don't have my hand raised. Okay, okay. Uh, was your question answered? Yes, my question uh, answered. Gideon, is it another question? Uh, no, sir. Okay, no problem. Uh, any other question before we wrap up? We have about 10 to 30 minutes. Okay, so I hope it's clear basically that we are, what we are going to do for this week's uh, project is that it has already been ingested for you and what you are going to work on is to first analyze the data that you have and after analyzing the data or after understanding the data format that you have you are going to make a series of pipelines which cleans the data which preprocess the data and make sentiment analysis and finally uh, work on some visualizations uh, okay then if there aren't any questions, I think we can wrap up the session. Let me stop the recording and yes. Okay, so feel free to uh, reach out on Slack if you have any question regarding the data ingestion or the extraction. Uh, I will make sure to put the code for the data extraction from the Twitter on the Google Drive and you can continue working uh, on, the, on your project.
Um, and we, as the other said earlier, I think today's task is much simpler compared to what you are going to deliver throughout the week. So it's best to start working on the next day's task uh, after finishing or after submitting today's task. Okay, thank you. Goodbye, guys. Uh, can someone stop the recording? Mm -hmm.